Hi friends, welcome back to my channel, Testing Mini Bytes. I'm your friend Amudan Shakti Vedh, and this is part eight of our grid playlist. Again, um, in this video, we are going to see a real world scenario. Like this is how one real time scenario that happens in your uh, office, right? So if you are working on a project, if you are collab collaborating with other other team members, uh, this is important to know, right? If you want to add a new feature. Right. Imagine you as a developer or an automation tester, you want to add a new test case or you want to add a new feature. What are the different process that you need to do so that you can get your code merged? Right. Uh, so so th this is the list of steps that you have to do. Uh, you know, we are going to do them one by one. For example, first, we need to pull the latest changes to the branch. Uh, on top of that, we can create a branch from the source branch. And then we can make necessary changes, which means we can amount the new features. Then we can make atomic commits and push the code to the remote. Then we can create a pull request for that particular branch against main or master and merge the code once it is approved, right? This is the whole process and we're going to do them one by one. So don't worry if you don't understand any, any of these things now, right? So let's go to the um, GitHub. Again, this is the project that we are working with. Um, again, I have, you know, it detailedly explained what is branches, when we need to create branches and all that. And let's say I go to my IntelliJ and this is the same project that I have here. Uh, this is a remote repository and this is a local repository, right? So what I'm going to do is I want to add a new feature, right? So first of all, uh, let's say if, you know, we want to make sure that we are fetching the latest code, right? Because in your local, uh, it is possible that some developers might push some code here and it might not be reflected in your local. So it is always a good practice before creating a branch. It's always good to first pull the latest changes. So let's me go there, git pull, and then origin master. So I pull the latest code from there to my local master branch, right? Once I do that, now I want to create a branch. Like I mentioned before, branches is basically a separate uh, line of development, right? You don't want to miss the already existing code. So you want to create a new branch, right? So that you don't miss with the existing code, which is working absolutely fine. So you it is always a convention to have feature branches, Jira ticket IDs, and whatever as a branch name. And then they normally, you can create a branch. Now, this branch is now checked out and you can see this is the branch that we ha currently have. Again, it is exactly the same copy of master, right? Now I want to add new changes, let's say, we have spoken about git pull then we have also spoken about git branches and now we are thinking about adding new features right so so i have added new new imagine this is your new code this is your new automated test whatever and then uh, you know we can also make commits to multiple files not just one file but you can also make changes to multiple files right it's not just one file and you can make the commit right as i mentioned before uh, we need to give uh, added new feature, uh, right? And yeah, stuff like that. Again, guys, the staging area is really important. Again, it, if you want to split this one commit into two, you can also do that. For example, uh, add a new feature changes, new feature changes to file one, whatever, right? So this is my first commit. And this one added uh, info about I have updated my, uh, you know, readme file with the latest feature. Updated readme uh, with new feature info, right? Whatever. And then this is another commit. So as long as your commits are atomic, it means you we have already learned the commits are basically a state that you want to go back to in the future. Let's say if you go back uh, in the future, if you want to come back to this state, you can easily do that. So that's why always have atomic commits, which are very meaningful. Right. In this case, I split them into two commits. Now it is time for me to push the code to the uh, remote. Again, the current branch in my local is feature branch. Right. In in the in the remote side, what is the name of the branch that you want to create? So it will automatically create the branch for you. Uh, uh, again, you can rename this to some other branch if you want. But for me, I, I also want to create a feature branch branch with the name of feature branch in the remote. So that, so if you go back here, uh, there is no branches here. So there is only one branch that is master branch. Okay. As soon as I do the push here, there are two new files that are getting pushed. And then this 
to new branch of this right if the branch is already existing it will just update the code for example i make one more change uh, i also make one more comment um, and then i do a push now this time it will not create a new uh, branch rather it will push to the existing branch right push to one commit to origin feature branch right so that's it again guys as usual if you want to see what is happening behind the scenes can go to the console and then you can have a look at all these logs uh, for your like whatever the push that is happening uh, whatever the commit that is happening you can learn all of them here right let's go here and then let's refresh you should see a new branch now right once this new branch is there you can go to pull request tab okay and then it's automatically asking you hey there seems to be some new feature uh, that's been developed here we want to merge these changes to the master branch um, i want to first compare I, you can give your description about what is this change okay uh, description i have uh, i have added a new feature uh, for sprint 10 whatever you can tag your jira ticket okay can do all that stuff here you can provide reasonings for your you know implementation and stuff like that again if you go down the line you can also see the three comments that i made okay and also you can see uh, what are the changes that were previously there previously it was just test one two three now i removed that and then i have added these three lines okay and then it was like this and then i have added something like this now right and then okay seems to be fine now you can create a pull request. So pull request is a process. Uh, it's a, it's, a, it's showing an intention to merge the new feature branch, new code to the master. If you notice here, Amudan Shaktivel wants to merge three commits into master from the feature branch. So I created a feature branch, tested my branch, working fine. Now I wanted this to be merged to the master branch, right? I can add developers who are in my case, but in this case, I'm going to just accept it myself, right? Uh, confirm merge once you do that now if you go to the code you can see the new changes are getting reflected in the master branch right and then now you don't have the need for this uh, feature branch it is already merged so you can remove them right you can also set github actions like automatically remove these branches and stuff like that right so this is how in, in real world things will happen uh, Again, if you notice why we are doing this, you can also, you know, when you can also edit directly here, right? But if this is a dummy project, so I am allowing this. But in real world, people will never allow you to merge into master directly. You, you should always create a branch, create a pull request, get it reviewed by someone. Once they approve it, you can merge it, right? Um, you can set, uh, in real world, uh, people might set, uh, you know, a, a rule, that that stops you from directly merging your code uh, to the to the main branch directly committing to the main or master branch right so this is the whole process you can have a look at this pull the latest changes uh, and then create a branch it, you know this is not this is optional like you know if there is some change in the master or something then you can pull the change you create a new branch that is feature branch make changes make atomic commits push the code to remote create a pull request uh, merge the code once it is reviewed, uh, once it is approved, and then all good, right? So now the new feature is being merged to the main or the master branch. I hope you find this useful. Um, IntelliJ does a lot of things behind the hood, like creating branches, checking out branches. There are a lot of things that is happening behind the hood. But as long as we can do the, do this job, you don't have to really worry about git commands. I'll see you guys in another great video. Tada, bye-bye.